number eight. The eighth chapter of the book of Romans. I've often said this, if you're going to shut me up in prison and you allow me to have one chapter in the Bible, I would pick Romans chapter eight. Such a blessed chapter to read and study and to meditate upon. Romans chapter eight, I want to read the first four verses. <laughs> if I could, please find it. Yeah, I find it. <coughs> oh, I forgot to mention, but Sister Naomi, she's sick, and Sister uh, Brother Carol's wife <laughs> is sick. Julia, <laughs> took me a minute to get that to come up. But if you would pray for them also, please. Romans chapter eight, verse number one. There is therefore now, I like that. Amen. Now, not tomorrow, not next year, not after you die, not after you get perfect, but now, right now, this morning. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sunday morning, first Sunday in December, amen. Now, there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. I'm going to read some more, but I can't help. I, when I come across something like this, I got to stop and say something about it. It didn't say those that are members of Stockton Baptist Church or any other church. It didn't say those that are religious. It didn't say a lot of things, but it said those that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. In, amen. First Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the 13th verse said, we all have been baptized by the Spirit into the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, as, which is the church, by the way, amen. But I'm glad I can stand here this morning with a clear conscience. No, I'm not perfect. You see me tomorrow this time, I still won't be perfect. You follow me to the grave one day and I still won't be perfect. But I'm glad I'm in Christ Jesus. Amen. And I'm in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation upon me. I've been set free. I've been forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And no condemnation. Oh, they, they'll accuse you about this and that and the other. They'll say things about you and some of them are true and some of them probably aren't. But there's no condemnation to that person that's been born of the spirit and placed into the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk, who walk, <laughs> who walk not after, yeah, I'm slowing down, I want you to get this, who walk not after the flesh, this old world that tries to influence me and you to be like that, when we know we don't want to be like that. It do us no good to be like that. We walk not <laughs> after the flesh, but after the Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit. My steps and your steps should be ordered by the Spirit of God. If you'll walk according to that Spirit, you'll be a lot happier person. If you walk according to that Spirit, you'll influence more people with your walk. Amen, amen, amen. So we walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit, of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death for what the law could not do. Amen. The law is in the Old Testament, friend. The law was given to Moses on Mount Sinai for the Jewish nation. They wanted some rules and regulations to go by. He gave them some. Now, they're not to be thrown away. Now, you never hear me say that. But I want to tell you Christ Jesus, according to your Bible, fulfilled every one of those laws because he knew you and I could not fulfill those laws. And he took care of the law when he hanged on Calvary there and gave his life and said, it is finished. It's finished. It's finished. The Bible said the law is our school teacher, our schoolmaster. It tells us what not to do.
But nowhere in that law does it ever tell you you keep that law and you'll go to heaven. It does not say that. The only way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. You're not going to get through the heaven trying to keep what people try so, so many times. Tell me, well, I'm trying to keep the King Commandments. Well, I, I appreciate that. And we ought to try to not do those things. But if you was able to keep them and you're not, you're not, you're human. You're just like I am and I'm just like you are. We're wrapped up in a, a robe of flesh that wants to, yeah, mm -hmm, wants to do against the law. But if you could keep that law, there's no guarantee you go into heaven. You only get to heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Religion has nothing to do with it. And a lot of other things don't have nothing to do with it. People put such emphasis on. Get down to the nitty gritty and get in that Bible and you'll see this. That is through the blood of Jesus Christ, you can receive forgiveness of your sin. It's not, uh, yeah, not what you do, what you say, where you've been or where you're going. It's a matter, have you trusted and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and his shed blood? Amen. That's the only way you, me, or anybody else can have forgiveness of our sin. So, walking after the Spirit, or walking in the Spirit, I should say. I believe that's what I want. In the fourth verse, and I'll quit, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. See there? You walk in the Spirit, and people will take notice about you. Amen. And the righteousness of the law will be fulfilled in you. Thou shalt not steal. My mama would have killed me if I'd have stole something. I believe she would have. Thou shalt not lie. My daddy used to tell me anybody lie will steal. My mom and daddy, although they wasn't Christians at that time, thank God they was before they died, but at that time they wasn't. They taught us morals based on this Bible. Yes, thou shalt not, thou shalt not covet, etc., etc., etc. But anyhow, as we walk in the spirit and not after the flesh, we will show the righteousness of that law. People will take notice that, hey, he or she are good people. I was in uh, Sam's, my second home. <laughs> I'm amazed how many times I have to go there during the week. Not, well, let me, she ain't in here. Hey, Amen. <laughs> Them there honeydews comes around. <laughs> but I was in Sam's and had to go to the restroom and I went into the stall and sat down and I looked, and on top of the paper rack was a billfold. And it was bulging. I mean, it wasn't just flat billfold laid on. It was bulging. And I said, my goodness. Somebody has left their billfold. And the old devil, you can look as sanctified as you want to, but the old devil will show up. He don't, he don't respect you and me. The old devil said, hey, <laughs> there's money in that thing. And normally, I do not tote money. You, you catch me with money on me, it's an unusual situation. I don't even tote a bill for They no use to. If you ain't got nothing, you ain't got nothing. If you ain't got nothing, you can't spend nothing. I can't teach my wife that, but I'm trying. But I said, my Lord. That's a pile of money. I didn't count it. No, sir. I didn't take it out of the billfold, but I could tell it and it was full. And it, I could tell it wasn't $1 bills, by the way, either. And I sat there and I said, well, I better go carry this to the manager and, and get this straight. And I did. I went out and asked a young lady. I said, where's the manager of Sam's at? And she said, just a minute. And she called him over the intercom. He came and I said, I found this billfold in the men's restroom and I want to return it to whoever it belongs to. I don't even, I said, I haven't opened it up and haven't touched it except picked it up and brought it to you. And he said, you did what? I said, I hadn't been in that billfold. 
he opened it up and said, man, you missed it. I said, no, I didn't. That's right. I found it. Yes. Live right. And God will take care of you. Yes, yes, it will. It wasn't a week after that. Some of you was here that morning. I had one of my sport coats on and I was hunting a pencil or a pen and reached on the inside of that pocket and I said, my word, what is that? And I pulled it out. It was a hundred dollar bill. Now I didn't put that hundred dollar bill in there. And I asked that woman that lives with me, my wife. She said, I ain't seen no, and I know it wasn't her because she would have never put it in there, Steve. That hundred dollar bill, I'd have never seen it. You said, how did he get there? I don't know. I'm just trying to prove a point. You do right. God does right. Amen. You do wrong. God has to do something to you or me. Amen. Walk in the spirit. I want to talk to you about that. I'm not going to scare you to death. Amen. <laughs> People talk about it in Baptist church. Anyhow, you talk about the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. They go, oh my goodness. No, no, no. I want to preach to you the truth. To walk in the spirit, in order to walk in the spirit, and that's what the Bible tells us to do. Hey, in order to do that, you have to be born of the Spirit. In the Gospel of John, the third chapter, Jesus told Nicodemus, you got to be born of the water and the Spirit. Amen. We, we talk about being saved. We talk about being born again. It's a spiritual thing. It's not a fleshly thing. It's a spiritual thing. That body of flesh that you're wrapped in didn't get saved. Boy, it gets quiet in here, doesn't it? Didn't get saved. <laughs> that body of flesh that you and I are wrapped in will always want to do wrong. But there's, the Bible says there's an inner man, Amen. a new man that wants to do right. I like what the old Indian said. He said, there's two dogs within me fighting. And the fellow said, well, which one of them wins? He said, the one I say sick them to. A lot of truth in that. The one you say sick them to. You feed the flesh, and, and I'm not telling you to quit eating, but I'm talking about spiritually thinking. If you read the wrong book and don't read the Bible, you're feeding the, the old man. I every once in a while, and you, you, you wouldn't want to be around me every day, but every once in a while, I'll just talk out to the old man. Old man, I ain't listening to you. Old man, I'm not going to do what you're trying to get me to do. Just go on and mind your business somewhere else. That old man always wants you to do wrong. But thank God there's a new man Amen. that said you should do this. You should do that. Amen, 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 amen. I'm, 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 I'm trying to get to my message. I just ain't going to get there, it looks like. But to walk in the Spirit, you have to be born of the Spirit. To, <laughs> you notice he said walk. He didn't say sit. Amen. You can't serve God sitting. You can't please God sitting. Now my Bible tells me and your Bible tells you there is a time for all things. There's a time to pray, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The time to weep is a time to laugh. There is a time to sit. But there's also a time to get up from a sitting position and do something. Do something. Tell me what to do, preacher. That's not my job. You need to ask him what he wants you to do. Amen. Amen. He didn't say sitting. He didn't say running. So many times we have people saved, and I appreciate this. And boy, they're just ready to go. You're not ready to run yet. Amen. You're not ready to go yet. Amen. Walk a while. It's like a little baby. When a little baby comes, we don't throw that baby down and say, all right, walk. 
No, there's a time that baby can't even crawl. Then there comes the crawling stage. Then there comes the walking stage. Then there comes the running stage. And the running stage gets there, they become an exercise machine because you got to run after them. <laughs> but there's a time for all those stages in a Christian life. You say, well, I've been saved for, I don't know how many years, ever how many you want to say, I've been saved for so many years and I'm still sitting. That's your fault. God wants you to walk. That's right. Amen. Then God <laughs> wants you to do something. Rather than sitting. Now, I took off fast when I got saved here in this church many over 50 years ago now. I was ready to run. That's my nature. It is not my nature to sit. I have to force myself to get in my office and sit down and pray and study like I should. I have to force myself because I always want to be going and doing something. And that's good that you want to do that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But there's a time you have to sit down and study. Hey, if you ain't got nothing coming in, you're not going to get to give nothing out. Amen. So walking in the spirit, it is not sitting. It is not running. Now, most people or a lot of Christian people are not walking in the spirit, I believe, because they do not know who they are. According to the Bible, if you're saved this morning, you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, you've been born again, hallelujah. You're in Christ, amen. But the Bible says in Matthew, the fifth chapter, the 13th verse, that you and I are the saved. Now listen at me this morning. We are the salt of the earth. Salt is a preserver. Some of you are not old as I am. <clears throat> Some of you are older than I am. <clears throat> Can't leave that one out. But I still remember the old smokehouse. I still remember the hams or whatever it was in that thing just coated with salt. Keep the worms out. Amen. This is before the day of a lot of things. You and I as Christians, you and I that are saved are the salt of the earth. The reason God hasn't, well, I could give you this reason, I believe, with all sincerity, the reason God hadn't already done to this earth what he did to Sodom and Gomorrah is because there's still salt here. Amen. There's still people here that love God. There's still people here that are serving God. Amen. The United States of America is guilty of every sin in this Bible on a wholesale, I mean on a big sale manner. You just look around, you listen to the news. Amen, amen. But God is so far withholding his wrath because there's salt here. Thank God. I want to see more salt, don't you? Get more people saved and we'll have more salt. We'll have more flavor to this world. Hallelujah. Not only are we the salt of the earth, but in Matthew's gospel also, in the fifth chapter of the 14th verse, said we are the light of the world. Men love darkness because of their evil deeds, but we come along like the six cell flashlight and shine light. You know why some people don't like you and some people don't want to be around you? Because you're light. You're light. And you reveal their darkness. You reveal that what they are. Amen. I... <laughs> Yeah, I, I get tickled with people. I can go knock on the door of the house. Somebody will pick through a, a blind or something and say, Preacher's out there. And it sounds like renovation in there. <laughs> I don't know what they're hiding or what they're doing. I'm not in there. But I'm thinking, my goodness. 
Is my light that bright? Is my light that bright if I get in there and see the wrong thing and shows up the wrong thing? Amen? Uh, people are scared of the preacher. I, 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 I've, uh, how many of you come to my house just to visit me now, not a party or nothing, in this church other than Smitty and Marie? That's what I figure. <laughs> not a person. You're welcome in my house. Just don't come at meal time, please. <laughs> I don't like to share. And I'm, I don't all of you come at one time either. Amen. But we're planning, and then brother, it's in Brother Carl's lap right now, but I offered to have the teenagers at our house for a Christmas party. And uh, we got a few uh, things that need to be renovated around there. And I'm sure they can take care of that or whatever. But anyhow, we're the light of the world. <coughs> I like what he said, the light of the world. He didn't say the light of Stockton, Georgia. He didn't say, go ye into Stockton, Georgia. He said, go ye into the world. Amen. God's interested in the world. God wants to see the whole world saved. Hallelujah. But knowing who you are, your salt, hey, your light. Number three, hey, the Bible says in first, or John 1, 12, that you are a son of God. God. Amen. You are a son of God. So you can cry out, as it is in the book of Romans, Abba, Father, Papa. You could say that without doing any harm to the scripture. Papa. That's what my grand youngins call me, Papa. And I, I, I was getting ready yesterday morning to come out here. We had a full day schedule here at the church and on into the night. And I was getting ready, and my phone rang. One of my grand youngers said, Papa, I knew I was in trouble. They called, guess what it's going to do? It's going to cost you money. <laughs> That's the show as the world. And he, uh, he asked me a question. He said, Papa, is Mama there? I said, no, no, she's already going to start, and I'm fixing to walk out the door and go myself. Well, I tell you what I need. I said, mm-hmm, I'm afraid of that. I said, it'll be taken care of, son. Don't worry about it. I ain't learned how to tell them no. Now, I can tell my youngins no. <laughs> I've told my youngins no so many times them growing up, they thought that was the only word I knew in the English language. No, you cannot go no. Can I be no? Can I no? But I'm not that way with grand youngins. It's payback time. I'm a son <laughs> of God. I'm the salt. I taste good. Smitty can't eat without salt. It's not good for you. It's a poison, really. Preservative. Oh, there's my young. <laughs> salt. I'm the light. I love youngins. You don't love youngins. There's something wrong with you. Care who you are. I'm the salt, <laughs> I'm the light, and I'm a son. Then there's something else I am, and you are too if you're saved. <laughs> I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Amen. You know what an heir is, ain't it? Y'all all know what an heir is? Well, me and my wife already have our wills made out. And we left everything to our youngest. There ain't going to be no fussing and fighting over my $2 bill. No. Then cut that thing up in four pieces. But I'm an heir. My son, oldest son, our oldest son, Jed, is a joint heir with our youngest son, Jody. The oldest girl, oldest daughter, Joan, is a joint heir with Julie. And then they're joint heirs with each other. They're going to get equal amounts. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I'm going to get an equal amount. Whatever Jesus has, I have. Y'all never seen that? In 1 John, I forget the chapter and verse, I'd have to look it up. As he is, so are we. 
I didn't say that. I didn't write that. I said that because I'm quoting you scripture. I'm going to be somebody when I get there because I'm a joint heir. When that will's read, my name's going to come up. Amen. And I'm going to get something. Whatever Jesus has got, I'm going to get something. Amen. Uh, I'm not stretching the scripture. It's right there. We're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I'm the soul of the earth. I'm the light of the world. I'm a son of God. I'm a joint heir with the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 8, 17, if you want to look it up. I'm not only that, but I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Cassie was in here make, putting all this together this morning and on the door. And uh, the brown part is it nothing but an old grapevine. And she kept working with it, and I kept picking at her. I was behind the pulpit writing myself notes. And I said, move it that way. I told her wrong on a purpose. She'd move it. And I said, oh, no, 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 it's got to go the other way. She'd move it that way. I said, no, 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 it's got to go that way. Y'all need to learn how to have fun. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Give you something to grin about. But I finally told her, I said, Kathy, you know that? Sort of represents me. How you took nothing, no grapevine, we'd burn them or whatever, throw them away. But I said, you took something that wasn't worth nothing and made something out of it beautiful. That's what God did Amen. when he got a hold of Carlton Allen that night. And shook me to my gizzard rattled and got my attention. He took nothing and has made something out of it. You said, oh, you're so braggocious about yourself. I'm not bragging on me. I'm bragging on God. And God can take nothing. Let me give you a resume of some of the people in your Bible. A man by called by the name of Moses that God used to deliver the children of Israel out of bondage. Hello? That appeared on the Mount of Transfiguration when Jesus, Peter, James, and John went up there? He was a murderer. The man murdered the Roman soldier. Amen? He was a shepherd, which is the lowest occupation you could have in those days. And God said, I want you to, to be the, the big man. God took nothing and made something out of it. Peter, old Peter, a fisherman. Now, if you never, I ain't talking about a Zebco 33 fisherman. He, they fish with nets and they'd pull them on the head. I had a, a fisherman in Peru who got saved in our church. And you shook hand with him, you knew you shook hand with a man. Not only was it calloused beyond anything I've ever seen, but he put it on you, son. Because every night he's out there pulling those nets. Amen. And God took Peter, who stood up, cussed, and three times said, I don't know him. Now, I don't know of a greater sin you could commit than saying, I don't know him. But Peter was selected, chosen by God to open the door to the New Testament church. He stood on Pentecost and said, I'll tell you just like it is. And he preached the death, burial, and resurrection, and thousands got saved. God took nothing, a murderer, and look what he did. And God took Peter, a denier, and look what Peter did as God used him. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 tells you that. Old things are passed away. 
Behold, all things have become new. I like the new part. You can have the old things. Amen. I like the new part. Amen. Not only that, not only we're the salt of the earth, not only we're we the light of the world, not only we're we a son of God, not only we're we joint heirs with Jesus Christ, we're somebody, folks. Not only we're we new creatures in Christ Jesus our Lord, but the Bible tells me we're a part of the body of Christ. In 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, 27th verse, I'm a part of the body. Now that body that is explained in that 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians is the real church, the big church. Amen. The church that you got baptized into by the Spirit of God and became a part of that body of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a part of that body. It does not make much difference with me whether I'm the little toe, big toe, or whatever. I'm glad I'm a part Amen. of the body of Jesus Christ. Knowing those things will help you walk in the Spirit. And I got one more if I can. Not only am I all of that, and you are too if you're saved, but the Bible said not only are you the salt of the earth, not only are you the light of the world, not only are you a son of God, not only are you a joint heir with Jesus Christ, not only are you a new creation in Christ Jesus, not only are you a pot or the body of Christ, but the Bible says, hey, you've been chosen. Don't get excited. You're a royal priesthood. Not only that, but he says you're a holy nation. You go to make up that holy nation of God. Not only that, but then I like this last one. You're a peculiar people. There's nobody like a Christian. You can't remanufacture them. Walmart don't sell them. Sam's ain't got them. I've looked. They ain't there. Amen. But you're, you're one of those peculiar people. That doesn't mean you're crazy. That doesn't mean you're, yeah, hmm, elevator don't go all the way up or anything like that. That means you're a peculiar people. We're peculiar because the things of the world don't occupy us. Amen. Now, I'm going to celebrate Christmas. Don't you get me wrong. And I hope and pray you do. And I hope and pray you keep the emphasis on what it's all about. It's the birthday, if I might put it that way, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we ought to rightly celebrate that birthday. I see nothing wrong with you having a Christmas tree. Oh, well, there's some religions you won't have that in your house. You don't want me to start with naming them either. I see nothing wrong with you putting lights up, whether on the inside, outside, wherever you want to put them. Uh, there's going to be at least three Christmas trees at my house. I'm not a Scrooge. Amen. Now, me and my wife's got an agreement. We don't buy each other nothing. But she forgot to put in there that I couldn't buy nothing for myself. So I'm going shopping, and I'm going to buy something for Papa Bear. Whatever I want. Amen. I'm going to get something. But I don't see anything wrong with celebrating Christmas. Now, we never told our children that, that there's an invisible person that shows up on Christmas Eve. I, 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 that's not the truth. You ought to tell your children the truth. When they're old enough to understand it, you ought to tell them. And I'd rather my young and hugging my neck than his neck. Amen. I mean, it come out of my pocket what got got the toy or whatever it was. It wasn't uh, the man coming down the chimney, so to speak. But I, I, I don't have a problem with Christmas at all. But celebrate it with the right atmosphere. Amen. We'll have some of our children, not all of them, at our house, and some of our grandchildren, not all of them, at our house, and, and we will try our best to be spiritual about the matter. Exchange gifts. Amen. Thank God for another year, another Christmas. 
They, there's nothing wrong with Christmas. We have made it a mess. And most people overspend, etc. That's your business if you want to do that. But celebrate it. But remember to walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit, not in the Spirit of the flesh, but in the Spirit of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And remember who you are. You're somebody. Hey, hold your head up. 